Now we're going to make a dictionary persistent. I'm Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and when last we left off I had just made this program called GRO.py and I think now it's time to introduce the concept of committing these objects in memory to the hard drive right out of, from the starting gate and introduce the shove API which stores any arbitrary Python object to a file using the uh, Unix slash Linux built-in database manager which uh, when you sh trade out shell for shove you can use extremely large databases in the background. So this sets the premise and sort of the wedge for that right from the birth of the project. So instead of uh, my dict, I think uh, I delete word and the variable names we choose now we will live with for the rest of the life of this project and it means so much. Uh, this is an instance of something and it's an instinct, ins instance of a dictionary object so I'm going to use D to remind myself of that but it's a row that represents or is going to represent a row like in a spreadsheet as I explained in a previous video. So D row equals that dictionary object. And uh, that means this guy here. Put item in D row. That's something I'll, I'll be more happy about uh, living with. Now, we're going to switch it from being in memory to being on the hard drive. And I got a great tutorial for that on this prior screen. And it is, in telling, me, it is telling me to import shell, because stuff like this isn't really available until you import it. And then it's telling me to set a variable name to shelf.open and the name of a database. So I like S. I'll go with S. Shelf.open. And this, this is going to be a dictionary of dictionary objects. Uh, so it's going to be much more than just D row. It's going to be D rows. It's going to be all D rows. And they were saying .db. I think that's going to become a file name or something, isn't it? Yeah, they're even putting these, uh, it's a literal, so uh, I need to put those uh, quotes around it. Yeah, so I'm going to be creating a file called derose.db. And then uh, we're doing this try finally thing. So on the try, you're setting an index, a, uh, a key named index of the object of the shelf object set equal to a dictionary object and then it's a try finally thing that's going to close it out so try doing the assignment S and the index in this case is going to be uh, the rows. The rows equals that dictionary object. Finally. S dot close. And I think it gets its little parentheses there, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes it does. It's a close method. And uh, this loop isn't exactly going to work now because the S object is closed, but uh, it's on the hard drive. 
and then it gets accessed according to this. You open something, and then you set something equal to a key. You close it, and then you have it around in memory uh, in that uh, scope until it uh, disappears. We'll be adding functions soon. So that makes a lot of sense. We will reopen, and then we'll try setting a plain variable to the index. So. Okay, so uh, looks like an exact copy of that line above. I should have just copied that, I suppose. And uh, now that we have that, we can set the rows. I'll just do the row equals s and then the index rows because we know it's only just one row in there right now. Save and uh, yeah that should work. First we're going to do an ls with just two files in there. Now we're going to python slopey. Hey it runs without an error and that means when we do an ls, we've got a new file. We can take a look at it if we wanted to. It's probably going to be in some semi-binary uh, format because, oh no, it's very read. Oh yeah, maybe binary. See it anyway? Yes. There you go. It's, you know, it's the native file format of, uh, what would that be? Yeah, the Unix uh, build-in database. What is that called? DB or something, database manager, something like that. So anyway, quit. Um, if we did a git status, it would, re it would report the knowledge of that file and a uh, temporary version of our text editing file. And um, we're never going to be committing this. The data that's created by the project is never part of the repository itself. So we're just going to have to get used to something that you know we're never going to add asterisk because it would be adding things that was data files that doesn't really belong uh, in the repository because it's going to be changing every time with every job and so there's no git add to do but there is oh yeah modified git add gropey git commit message. Uh, what did I do? I uh, improved the uh, variable names and used shell. I'll just say added shell. Added use of shell and uh, shell. Python shell. So much more in that, which means a database is created, blah, 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 blah. It now it can be connected to, you know, all the rest. Well, that is it. Now, up there, and so the project continues to grow. See, thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.